Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Akram and you are watching Knowledge360. In the previous video, we had discussed about system columns in PostgreSQL database. In this current video, we will be discussing about the ways how we can modify a table in PostgreSQL database. So before that, we have a question that why the modification is needed for PostgreSQL database tables. So there are several reasons to it. One reason is that when we create the table, the requirement is not clear to us when the table is created and later we want to modify the table. And the second reason can be when we make some changes in our data model or the requirements changes after we create the table. So for that we need to make changes accordingly to accommodate those requirements. So let's see how we can modify the tables. So in the modification of table first we'll see the adding of a column how we can add a new column to the current table so first let's create a table called products the table is created and now we'll add a new column named description in the table so for that let's first show you the table is created or not the table is created and if i show you the script Okay, here we can see that we have three columns and we don't have any description column in the table. So now let's alter the table and here I'm adding a new column. So the column is added. Now let's again create the script. Now we can see that we have added a new column named as description. So this way we can add a new column into the PostgreSQL database table. The next example is how we can add a column with a constraint. So in the same table, we'll add a new column called stock and we'll declare it as integer and we'll maintain the check constraint as stock should be greater than or equal to zero. As of now, we don't have any such thing. So let's alter this table to add a new column with a constraint. So the table is altered and a new column is added and it is added with the constraint. So we can verify the same from the create table script from the database and here we can see we have added a new column stock integer and a constraint is also added to it. Now let's see how we can drop a column from any table. So when we go to modify the table structure in a database table, we may need to modify, we may need to drop the table column as well not just adding the things so let's see how we can drop the column so to drop the column we have the syntax alter table table name and then drop column keyword and then the column name while dropping the column we don't need to mention the data type of the column so let's drop that column called description from the products table now if i show you the updated script the description column is no more here that means we have dropped the description column after adding and dropping of columns now let's see how we can add constraints to table so we have already seen one type of constraint adding that is the check constraint so i'll add another constraint to the table on the name column so i have added the check constraint that name cannot be blank so i'll verify all the changes at once so this way we have added a check constraint to a table by altering the table now in the next example we will see how we can add a unique constraint to the table column so here in this example we are adding a unique constraint to the name that means we don't want two products or more of the same name so for that we can add this unique constraint on the name column of the products table and the next example is to create the primary key by altering the table so for that let's say we create a table called products group where we don't have any primary key but we'll alter the table to add the primary key so for that we follow the syntax alter table then the table name and we need to add the add constraint keyword and then the constraint name and primary key the type of constraint and then the column name on which we are going to add the constraint the constraint is added also for the products group let's verify them so this is the products group table so here we can see that we have created the table products group and we have one constraint here that pk group with the primary key and the primary key is group id so in the next example we'll see how we can add a foreign key constraint into a table by modifying the table structure so at the beginning we don't have the group id column in the products table so let's add that 
we have added a group id column into the products table now we'll add a foreign key constraint into the product table that will refer the group id column into the product group table so let's create the foreign key constraint the table is altered now let's see both the tables description so this is the updated products group table script and also let's see the updated product table script so here we can see we have added many things so one of them is we have added unique name constraint here on the name column and the second is we have added a foreign key fk group on the group id that refers to the products group table group id column and next we had added a check constraint on the stock column that checks the stock value that should always be more than zero or equal to zero that cannot be negative so this way we can add constraints to table by modifying the table structures in the previous examples we have seen how we can add the constraints now we'll see how we can remove the constraints by modifying the table structures that means using the alter table commands so first let's remove the unique key constraint so for that we need to follow the same pattern that is alter table table name and then we need to mention the keyword drop constraint and then the constraint name so let's drop the unique constraint first that is dropped now let's drop the foreign constraint from products table foreign constraint is also dropped and now let's drop the primary key constraint from the products table okay we have primary key constraint on the product groups table so let's drop the primary key constraint the primary key constraint is also dropped now let's verify the changes first we'll see the products table from the products table if you see we have dropped the check constraint we have dropped the foreign key constraint as well so we don't have those check constraint now we had one check constraint on the name value that name can names should be unique so that unique key constraint we have dropped and also we had one foreign key constraint on the group id column so that is also dropped now let's see the product groups table where we had primary key column constraint on the group id if you see we don't have that primary key constraint on the group id so this way we can create and also we can drop the constraints in postgresql database tables while modifying the table structures now let's see how we can modify the columns default values while modifying the table structure so for that first let's see how we can set a default value that is we can follow that alter table command alter table products then we need to add the keyword alter column then the column name and we need to use the set default and whatever the value we want to put as default so we can mention first alter the column the table is altered now we can verify that if you see the price column has default value 99.99 that we had added and also we can remove a default value from the table columns we need to follow the syntax alter table table name then alter column then the column name and drop and the default keyword so let's execute it now the column default value is dropped we can verify that if you see there is no default value for the price column also while modifying the postgresql tables we can also change the data type of any column so let's change the data type of the column price currently the price column has the data type of decimal 10 comma 2 so we want to change it to 12 comma 2 so let's do that so the table is altered so for that we have used the alter table command and then the table name we follow the keyword alter column then the column name and then the keyword type and then the data type we want to mention now let's verify that if the data type is modified or not so here we can see the data type of price column is modified to 12 comma 2 also we can rename a column name that means we can change a column's name to something else while modifying the table structure in postgresql database so for that we follow the syntax alter table table name then the rename column keyword and then the column name we mention the current column name whatever it is and then the keyword to and then id id means then the new column name so here we are modifying the column name product id to id simply so if currently we see the column name is product id of the products table here it is but we want to modify it to only id that means we want to give a new name to it so let's modify it 
the table is modified now let's see the updated script column name of product id is mod modified to id from product id in the previous example we saw how we can modify a column name now we can see how we can modify the table name as well so in this example we are going to modify the table name products to inventory so for that we follow the syntax of this alter table then the table name then the keyword rename to and then the new name of the table that we want to give so let's modify it the table name will change it to from products to inventory so we have modified the table name now if i refresh there is no product table instead there is the table name called inventory if i show the script all the details will be remain same but the table name has changed now to inventory so this was all about modifying the table structures in postgresql database and we modify the table when the requirement changes comes after we have implemented our data model or we find some mistake or we want to make some changes to accommodate new things so for that we need to modify the table structures so this was all about the modifying table structures in postgresql database in the next video we will see the privileges available in postgresql database so if the video was helpful do like the video and subscribe the channel to get the notifications for upcoming videos so let's meet in the next video with the topic of privileges in postgresql database so till then take care bye bye